day four, winch fitting, right. Welcome, right, so let's have a little recap. So we have now fitted the winch, we've bolted it in. Oh, there was some debate, Simon, you've bolted it in too early because the instructions did not tell me to bolt it in, that you're not gonna get your little hoop out, but I took the elastic band off and I reckon I'm gonna be all right. But a good point, it might be worth, um, someone said you might be able to sort of un take that elastic band off and get a bit of length. I guess you can just sort of wind it back. You obviously can't power it up. Um, and then so that you had a little bit of that coming out. Probably a good point. Someone also asked, while well, I'm down at it, what are the spacing bolts between, the spacing between the bolts on the winch bumper as supplied by Land Rover? Because some people love worn, some people don't. Fine. Um, but they were roughly 115 millimeters front to back and 257 millimeters side to side. Right, so that's that done. Right, what are the questions? Oh, radiator. So someone said, oh, Simon, clean that radiator. It's doing my OCD nutting. And so I have, in the freezing cold this morning, cleaned off the radiator. Now, there was a lot of mud collected in there and I brushed it off delicately. I didn't want to damage the fins. And then I sort of um, washed it, but there was a load of mud. And I'm a little bit worried the risk of blocking your radiator doing silly off-road stuff is fairly high to medium. Um, and obviously when, you haven't, when you've got those flaps on, you can't pressure wash through it. And that is still a point of debate. But someone said, well, if Land Rover's telling you to cut the connectors off, the ones we wrapped in a glove, then surely it's not gonna give any error messages. And we did start it this morning to move outside and there were no error messages other than those associated with the radar, which is not connected. So, some people are saying, well, I might just take off my active flaps. Now, I'm not suggesting that, because obviously I think it's quite cool because it keeps your car warm and all that, but there's another point of debate. I guess every car is a compromise. If you're gonna use it more off-road, you may wanna adapt and adjust things more than if you are using it more on-road. Right, right, what are we gonna do today? So, enough, have I covered all the points we were gonna cover, Tyler? We do like the comments, and I do like to start the video with a little comment, but everyone's saying, shut up, Simon, get on with it. So we will. So we now, what do we have to do today? We have to connect the antenna. So there's a little wireless antenna we are gonna stick on the top here, and it's gonna root round and connect to the little gold-plated connector there. We are gonna connect this control circuit here onto this current. Now this detects the current going through the wire, and this is gonna stop it off. Ah, right. Brings me to my next one. Someone said, Simon, this is all great, the winch. I'm like, what is that box in there, that gray box? Why do we need it? We'll talk about that later because we have to run a wire. And this is where, this is where those of us that are loom sensitive could, could get slightly anxious because we've got to run it up into the fuse box. So we're gonna, you can guess what's going on by what I've colored in. It's like, if it's colored, I'll be having that off later. Oh, little thing, little thing we found this morning, Tyler. What do we, I haven't even done any winch talking yet. I've been waffling on for five minutes. Right, we noticed that if you disconnect the gas struts, your bonnet is normally limited here, as you can see by the length of the gas strut. If you pop the little clip here, the little whoop, use that little hoop, just pop it out a little bit and then tap those off and get your glamorous assistant to hold the bonnet and do the other side. There are two little holes that line up here. So if I take this out, Tyler, look, look maybe you come around the side or can you see from that? And then what it allows you to do is to open the bonnet another like 15 degrees and then lines up there and you jam a screwdriver in. I'm pretty sure Land Rover designed it like that. So for us filming, it's much better because we can get much more light in along the back. But if you're doing any work on your Land Rover, careful you don't put the suspension up there. I reckon we're running out of room, Tyler. Because we've put the suspension down again now because we're going to be doing work here. So we're using the car suspension to make it easier. Right, winch. Right, and Tyler, you've worked this out. Give me the camera. Right, so you need to grab your antenna. Um, there we go. And obviously, now it's got a little rubber a rubber cover on there. Let me pull that off. Arr. No, we'll pull it off later, because we yeah. might damage it. it. Right, and you're gonna grab an alcohol wipe and you're gonna grab your sticky pad. There you go, your little sticky donut pad. Hold on, let me, let me do some zoom in. There you go, yeah. Okay, now apparently, <laughs> It is magnetic, but not a lot of the car is. Um, so we, we, we did a little, mag yeah, so the hinges are, but the bonnet is, 
Hold on, where's my camera gone on? Oh, here we go. Um, but yeah, that wouldn't really work. So Land Rover have decided to advise you to take this little cover off in here, the one we had off when we put in our fuse in. So we can just pop that little cover out. Oh, goodness me. Am I going to get that back on time? Right, and apparently we, this is the perfect size, as if it was made for the job. So Tyler's got a little alcohol wipe. He's going to clean all the grease and grime off there. So we get super suction. Someone's been off-roading. Oh. It's like a riverbed. It is a bit swampy at times. Might be stuff living in the engine. Right, so obviously this is the antenna for the wireless remote control winch. Ah, people, you know I ridiculed yesterday, Tyler. I was going, why have they given you such a long USB cable? Apparently that's for if you forgot to charge it, you can plug it in the car, stand outside the car, watch the winch and... Ah, um, see, I think that's a good point. We may have, it may be useful, but I think I'm still going to get a shorter lead for charging it and keep that one as a spare. Yeah. Right, was. That's a one-off situation. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those ones where if you had a short lead and it was easy to do, you'd never... That's it, there we go. 3M quality. Right. That was a pain to pull that off. What should have been the easy bit? Right, glob that on, Tyler. Which, now, we're supposed to, so think which direction your cable's going, because we need to run that cable down the back there, so. Power. Run it adjacent to that power cable we've put in. Right. Now, with those things, don't try and see how well they're stuck, because <laughs> these have taken like 24 hours to get. Right, so, get that all. Blimey. That's... Go on, just how long have they given us, Tyler? I think that was an off-the-shelf, not custom-made antenna. Yeah, I don't think we needed it. Maybe we'll just, yeah, we'll put it on the Disco 3, though. Right, anyway, here we go, right, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna have a little more than we need, I reckon. Should we just put it down so they've been generous, Tyler? Yeah. Yes. We like more than less. We do. I'd be more annoyed if it was too short. Yeah, it would be infuriating. Well, I'm following the power cable. Yeah, follow that power cable down. Right, you don't need to watch us do that. So we're going to root that down, root that down. It's going to come round here, and then it's going to, we're going to leave it here for a minute because that's got to go through that grommet with the other one, hasn't it, Tyler? Yeah. So get that there ready, and then we'll do the next one. Right, Tyler's got that rooted through. So one thing was we weren't happy having that thin wire because it's quite a thin wire. I know it's only an aerial. Um, so he's wrapped it in some more of that, but not supplied. We have to supply that ourselves. And that's the trunking where it's got the slit in it. So you just got to tape it up at the end. So that's all, that's all good. There we go. He's in there, but he's all thin. But that looks much more factory. If you've got everything else in conduit, that wire, even though it's just an antenna and it's not got any current going through it, it just didn't look right to me. Right, now you've got a connect. We've got, what have we got this one here, Tyler? Connect that one. Now be careful, we've got this one here as well still to go. Yep, so just, we can move that, yeah. So that goes on that current limiter on the side. It's kind of going to be tight to get it in, but that's good because that other wire will keep it in. I'll make sure he clicks, that's it, yeah, lovely. Right, now we've got to thread that, we've got to thread your aerial cable through your grommet. Through your grommet. We love it. We've absolutely butchered that. Because we have to get that massive connector through it, the one yeah. that Tyler's just plugged in. There's no way that was going. These grommets, I've decided, are not waterproofing. They're, I mean, because grommets can serve two purposes. One is waterproofing, and one is to stop the edges chaffing. So I think we've decided they're more of a protection grommet than a waterproofing grommet. I mean, you can... Not easier. Not easier. So that's onto that gold connection there, Tyler. We can't see. This is rubbish video, Tyler. <laughs> I can't see what you're doing with your great big nuts in there, look. Yeah. There we go. So that's all in. You can see that there. Boop. Right. So we will sort these grommets out later. That's going to be our last job. Right. Here we go. Um, what have we got now? Yeah, so we've, we we just hooped up a load of that spare wire in there. It's sort of neat. Um, right. Tyler, do you want to grab a camera? I've got to do one of my essays again. Right. Right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to this. Now, 
This has answered many questions. So this here is a red and black wire. Now this goes into the gray box that we installed at the end, middle, start. I don't know, it's all, it's all blurring into a sort of painful mystery of time. Right, now, I was looking last night at the winches, the warm winches. So I thought, yeah, this is an off-the-shelf warm winch. I've got a manual for it here. I've got, I've got 10 manuals for it here. I've read them all. There is no mention of this extra wiring. I will explain now what this extra wiring is for, what the grey box is for, and why I think, well, my, my guess, because I don't really know, um, Land Rover not disclosed it to me. So normally with a worn winch, you get the worn winch, you get the battery cables, you have the wireless, you have the wireless controller. Um, so there's no need for loads of wiring, beautiful. Just bam, bam, big earth, big power. It sorts the rest out itself. Now, Land Rover have obviously decided to overcomplicate Warren's design. And so they have added, and, and there is good reason, there is good reason, uh, I believe there's good reason. Um, they have added a couple of extra wires. Now, these two wires are the most difficult to do. Everything else has been fairly straightforward. And it's these two wires, and, and what they give you is this. First of all, they give it to you without any conduit, which is a bad idea. Yeah. Um, again, yes. Um, so we are gonna need, I mean, yeah. So we are gonna to have to put this in some conduit, but this wire is gonna go, it's gonna go up here. It's gonna go round here, it's gonna go under here. We need to take all this off, we need to take this off. It's gonna go warm down here, it's gonna go zoom into that. Right under here, there is a fuse box, we will see it. And we need to connect the black wire to a cranking signal. Now, what do they mean by that? Basically, to you and I, me and you, it will be a starter motor signal. So when we've got the key in and we turn it to start, there's no key but you know what I mean? And it's going, no, 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 no. That is cranking. So it needs to sense, for some reason, for some reason, which I will have a stab a guess at, the winch needs to know when the car start motor is going. It took me a while, keep thinking. Right, and it also needs to know when the ignition's on or off. So, and I don't, we don't even know, there's no sort of user guide with the Land Rover stuff. So I'll have to, maybe there is in the owner's manual, I'll have a look. Um, I can understand why it wants to see if the ignition's on. Now, does it need, does it work if the ignition's on and not on? I guess it probably needs to be on. Um, so it's saying I'm not gonna work unless the ignition's on. And I can see reasonable reason for that. Um, because you probably wanna be running your engine, I'm guessing, with a winch, because then it's charging the battery and helping supply things. But why does it need to know? And I've looked and I couldn't find any mention on the internet of any winch wiring needing to know when your engine was cranking. No, 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 no. I think I know. Right, should we go to the whiteboard? Right, let's go to the whiteboard. Right, so we have under our seats, that's our seats there, it's a lovely seat. Under our seat, we have a battery here and we have got plus and minus and the minus goes to the frame. The plus then goes up, it goes behind the dash and it goes up into the engine bay where we were and we connected our winch. So there's that little connector block on the wing and the winch wire came up and went round and in the back there, right? And then it goes down to the starter motor on our engine, there's our engine and there's our starter motor. Look, right, now, if the winch here, I'll we'll have a W on there, look. Um, if the winch was going, and the starter motor was cranking, then there would be a lot of current going down this wire and down this wire. And I think this wire here isn't capable of taking the, the starter motor. I'm trying to work out why would you be there? Maybe you were winching something and it was going slow and oh, I'll start the car to give it a helping hand. So don't know. Um, why they couldn't do it on ignition, don't know. Um, so I think they're worried about this wire melting. So what they've done is they've put a control box here, right? And what they've done is they said, well, if, if this is cranking, if your start motor's going, stop the winch or don't let the winch start or whatever. That's my theory, but I'm guessing. Um, Land Rover don't share this data with us, but I'm sure they'll tell me if I'm wrong. Right, so I think that's why we need to connect to a cranking signal. Right, let's go and have a look. Right, so they're telling us we've got to route the cable out to here, which is the one that's already sort of connected to the gray box and we'll go along from that and then we'll connect that other lead that we'll put the conduit on 
and you're going to fly him all the way up around the inside of the dash and uh, sorry the inside of the wing parallel to that other main battery cable we went on and then it's going to go into this rear bit under the windscreen cowl and it's going to shoot along there and there's a little hole in the bulkhead it's got to go through and we'll show you that and then it's got to go all the way along the top of the bulkhead so these are the bracing bars and this is your windscreen area and you've got to take your wiper blades off and your your arms off and the cowl off and it zips along here oh look Tyler they show it going above that which is good um and then it goes along then you then you can find your fuse box then you open up your fuse box then you've got to get two of these connectors and it tells us which ones all right you route it through the little rubber bit which is easy enough then you unplug the two connectors all right and it tells you which ones you've got to do and then you've got to take the connector apart and cut into the main loom Woo! woo, woo. i hear the loom and the loom word mention we haven't got that biblical reference in yet have we yeah. um so so could this be where some people who shall remain nameless have had problems connecting into the this is telling you let me see if i can actually find the word tyler where it says please cut into right where's it says it says the black crank wire which is the one has got to go to pin 16 on this connector and the ignition the red so the red this is the red and black wire we've got to feed through need to connect to pin 10. So it says remove the connect the covers inspect the relevant pins um additional and it says cut the wire on pin 16. so it does actually tell you to cut now i'm not a big fan of cutting i'm trying to think when i do like cutting but um what's that haircuts haircuts yeah no no <laughs> i forgot my hat again i went home for lunch and i've left my hat at home so you'll have to part with my my receding hairline right so we have come up with a we've come up with a cunning idea haven't we tyler we are going to use doo -doo, these so these we are going to rather than i've got the wiring diagram and i don't know why they just don't jump onto the fuse so this this is a clever little piggyback fuse connector um and we we take out the fuse the relevant fuse that goes to this wire that i've looked at and it gives us an extra wire coming out it's piggyback and it gives it its own fuse so we are going to use these and i think there's no need to cut any wire um so no looms will have been hurt in the making of this video which is our objective isn't it tyler yes right we are going to just have a little discussion about these later but let's get on because we've had computer work we've had whiteboard lessons we've had all sorts going on so first thing we are going to do tyler look at i discarded it in we are <laughs> we are gonna now god that's, now interestingly they, they told you to did you notice in the instructions there tyler were you paying attention or had you gone to sleep i'm not sure, it's not sure. <laughs> no one can hear you anyway tyler um gosh um they told you to coil it all up in the corner but i don't wow. think there's i think i'm going to run it neatly i'm not going to coil up and i'm just going to cut it to the length i require but for now let's get some conduit in try and thread it so this is a roll of conduit and we are gonna get that and we know it needs to go over the back there don't we tyler and we're gonna come down here along here down here we're gonna route our site differently to theirs yes are oh, you giving it no. they can't hear you anyway tyler tyler's giving a spoiler well, it might not even hurt it, so. we are going off piste again aren't we tyler just a bit mm, it's friday right oh tyler make yourself useful show everyone how to do that yeah there's a little rubber oh they can hear me they can yeah, see they you tyler so yeah they can't he, he's gonna do it one-handed he's so you tell me what you want me to tell him tyler he's having trying to he's trying to remove this knob the rubber he's done it enjoy i'll become an interpreter mild noises of joy <laughs> yes he's screwing them on not screwing it up tyler <laughs> right it's on he's joy noises of joy and self-congratulation right back to this so i've just taped those up there so i've made myself hopefully because this is i don't know how much oh no i'm tell you what i'm not going to use because we're not going to use their connectors anyway are we tyler Checking my warranties Checking my warranties well and truly gone now oh, i think it went the first day <laughs> you remember no i'll say we never made that car nothing to do with us 
Right, um, right, here we go. Well, that's easier, look. Top tip, right, we will thread this right in Tyler, and then we'll get on and we'll route this front bit and we'll show you how we've routed that because we've got to get this connector round the back behind the headlight and they've, they've, it's really good actually. They've given us this bit here, they've got this and that cunningly fits on that there. So we're gonna insert that in there and route that. Right, we'll see you in a minute. Oh, interrupted Land Rover head office. Right, sorry about that interlude, but our friend, Mr. Skywalker has told us that he has worked out apparently how to open the flaps. We haven't got our active flaps now. Right, but apparently he's done it. He's gonna send it to me. Right, okay, which is very helpful of him. Thank you very much. Right, so we have got to remove this. These are these little, they, they sort of, you untwist them. Sometimes you've got to hold the bottom because the whole thing twists. And it should be a central bit. That one, right. And sometimes you can't pull them out. But if you lift the plastic, they seem to come out easier. All right, okay. Now, interesting, it's got, show them the remove first one and the remove last. So they've, they overlap in the middle. So they've written remove first. But obviously yours won't be so beautifully coloured in. I guess it'd be different for left hand drive and right hand drive as well. That's a good point, Tyler. There we go. I didn't yes, you will need one of those, but I did We've had all this apart, so we look like we know what we're doing, Tyler. Right, so I'll show you this one. I won't make you endure doing the second one, but what you can then do is you can then lift that up and <laughs> It doesn't exactly fully expose the fuse box, does it? But you can see in there a fuse box and that's where we're trying to get to. And we're trying to get the wire around that wheel arch up to here. Right, I'll get the other one of these whooped off. Right, so here we go. I think I'm gonna start by actually plugging that in, Tyler. I reckon we'll, then we'll, we'll know we're, we're good. Didn't have a reassuring click. Oh, there we go. Right, right and we're gonna follow that main loom Exactly up there. Right. I wouldn't want to do this as just that red and black cable. I wouldn't. There we go. We'll give it a little bit of room there because the headlight's got to go in there. Right. And then it goes behind this bit up here, doesn't it, Ty? Oh, it goes behind. Oh, let's go under my aerial. Oh, my antenna. Oh no, we weren't going to go that far, were we, Tyler? We were going to, we were going to go off piste, weren't we? Yeah. So I'm going to go. We are. We were going to go underneath here. But we have highlighted right. We should go. I was going to say let's 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 we're going to have to do like a double video here of this is what we. <laughs> right. No. Okay. We are we right. So where they're supposed to go, Tyler? If you can point. If you look under here at the back corner, you're supposed to go through that hole in the bulkhead there. Um, now, I don't think, I don't know if my conduited cable will fit through there. What's that? I don't think it will. I don't think it will. So we, we were gonna go across here. Now this is where Land Rover told you to route the earth, but we weren't happy with it going. But what we've decided is this here will make a beautiful runway to get us into behind the bulkhead. Cause this bit here is just foam look. So we are gonna skedaddle, that's the word of the day. I'm gonna skedaddle up here through there. And what we thought we would use is these ingenious little cable tie bases. So we can stick those down. They're perfectly sized, look. We're gonna have a couple of those along there. So we'll get those stuck on and we'll cable tie that. And then we've gotta head over towards that fuse box. So we'll, we'll get over there and we'll see you in a minute. Right, so hallelujah, we are now here. We have got these two. So the black needs to go to the cranking signal and the red needs to go to the ignition life. So now, actually I will have a little digression. Oh, now, I can see in part why Land Rover have gone back to the fuse box because depending on which engine you've got depends on which, how your whole engine bay is wired. Now, if you have got, if you're lucky enough to have the 400 brake horsepower, the big petrol one, the V6 petrol, you should have a connector here on this bracket here with a green and white wire. And that is actually the starter motor trigger signal. So 
you could, I, I've looked at all the wiring diagrams and I understand why. So you could connect the black one to that one. Now, check it out yourself um, before you go doing anything crazy. But I believe that. But, but obviously, all engines are wired different and we don't have that one. It goes down with this starter positive cable down there. Um, the other place we could have tapped in, and we did look at Tyler because we looked at all is there's a connector here with this bolt on the top and you can open that one. And we could have connected it into the... What colour was it, Tyler? Orange and yellow. Orange and yellow. We could have connected it in there. But in the end, I think we decided it's easy to do it in here. But we haven't done it yet, so we will have a look. So, right. So, to get this fuse box cover lid off, there are four tabs. And I've coloured them all in orange. You can see one. You can see two. And, oh, there's one at the side here. Come down with your light, Tyler. There. There's one there, look. And there is one at the back somewhere. Oh, it's, it's here. Look, it's here. No, you can't get down low enough, Ty. You got him. Right, so, and to get them off, you've got to push the tab into the middle. Now, I don't think I fitted it properly. I think I've cheated, haven't I? Right, now, getting the lid off is your first battle. Your second battle is, is, Tyler was saying, this is a palaver. If you've broken down because you've blown a fuse, you're going to have a, right, oh, here you go. Come on, baby. Now, Land Rover in the instructions, and I will put the link to the instructions in the description below, Land Rover's instructions for doing all of this so you can read the proper way of doing it. They tell you to take this panel off, and it does just pull off, but you've got to take your wiper, yeah, you've got to take these off here. So I'm going to skip that, and let's have a look if it works or not. So here it is, and on the inside, now, luckily they've given you this A and B. Now, in the thing, you'll see the connectors refer to A, now, they tell you to get into these plugs, right? And you have to like dismantle the plug and take the cover off and you have to squeeze it, squeeze it in here. We've got the battery disconnected, haven't we, Tyler? Yeah. I think you have to squeeze those little two tabs. Then this little lever comes up over like this and then you can get this out and then you can connect into one of the wires, which I think you could probably have a go at doing. Doing there, what, can you remember what color wire? I can't remember anyway. Right, but we're gonna try it. We have it's pin 16 on B, it's, pin t it's 16 on one. T right, we are gonna have a go at doing the fuse jumping thing. So bear with me. Oh, we've got to go and do another bit of lecture, haven't we? So we are gonna, whoo, gosh. Wow, you messed my gimbal up. There you go, it's not every, not every, you don't get that said to you every day, do you, Tyler? Right, so basically we are gonna try, now Tyler's marked these, you need to get your illumination out again. So this, oh, did we not put the fuse back in? No. no so it so it, it should be a, a it's, on the other one. it's on the other one. Oh. It should be a five amp fuse in there. Yeah. Right, and we are going to piggyback that one. And we're also going to piggyback that five amp fuse there. Now, can you remember which numbers they are, Tyler? Is it, oh, it's written on there. Look, A is that's F8. eight. That's eight. And, and this F9. is F9. And I've put the A and the B on the relays there. You won't actually be blessed with that that's a little freebie for me love gift to you viewers out there right now we now have, so we are going to plug this in and we are going to connect the ones now i will i'll go and check because one of them's got to, i've got to remember if the red goes to the a or the b we'll go and have a check shall we tyler but let me just explain these now oh right so i was talking to tyler and i said well we could put it going this way but then the lead's coming down the bottom but we're lucky enough, yeah, get your, yeah, but we're lucky enough, we could plug it in there and that'll go up neat. But then I had a bit of a thought about how these work, which I will have a little mini interlude and we will discuss it on the whiteboard. Let's go. Right, so this is my very accurately drawn, stylized picture of the fuse box. And along this edge, we have fuse one and they're all labeled F1, F2 and you've got the two little spaces and the fuse. So we've pulled the fuse out and we are now gonna fit our one of these is gonna go into there. Right, but if you look at this, is there's actually two fuses at the top there. I don't know if you can see. So we've got, and we need to be careful because if we've got, this is the power coming in, okay? And it goes up and what you've got is you've got a staggered set of two fuses, okay? And then, okay, so, so this one we'll call output one, and this one we'll call, there we go, output two. And there's a fuse in here. I've forgotten how you draw a fuse. That looks more like a bulb than a fuse. Right then. And so that gives us our two outputs. And you see, so just for example, say I had five amps in here, I'd have five amps here, and there'd be five amps flowing through that fuse and five amps flowing. 
for that fuse. So that's beautiful. And that's the way you should install it. So basically this end here, so the non the non output end. Let me let me let me draw it in red. Look. Highlight at the end. Ah, there you go. <laughs> the red pin there, you need to make sure that's on the input. Right. So what happens if you have it the other way round? So if you then have the right, I've got to get this right. You're still gonna have your two outputs, but right, let me just draw this. Hold on a minute. So if we fit it instead of that way with the red on the end, if it goes that way, we effectively lose that connection there and we gain a connection here okay but the out but the output moves over to this side that's it sorry output two right so we then end up with this configuration so the power comes in you get five amps going there to output one and you get the other five amps going through the first fuse and then along so actually you will put 10 amps through that fuse because that'll have the current for this one and that one so it's important that you put it this way now when you look at the circuit board it's easier to do it here than it is under the car the input is this side here isn't it tyler it's this yeah. row it's this row here the outer edge. is the input from the relays from the battery from the and this one this this other one here should i do it in a different color to look flash tyler okay this these here are the output and obviously the fuses bridge the output so we have got to make sure tyler that we get it with the input on this pin. So that is gonna be nice, isn't it? So the wire's gonna go off towards the relays. Yeah. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Another, <laughs> anyway, but it's worth thinking about. It's worth thinking about. Oh, we, we like thinking about all this stuff. If we're gonna do it, we might as well get it right. Right, we are gonna go back over to the fuse box and we are gonna start cutting the wires and getting ready to crimp these, Tyler, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> Right, oh gosh, I've still got, so, I drilled a hole. I managed to drill a hole through that rubber by just bending it over and I got the drill in down here. So I've put a nice, a nice bit, we've cable tied it at the top here. So we've got it going in. I'm not worried about the conduit, so I'm gonna snip that off now. But I use the cable tight as a little lead wire. Right, and I've, right, so let's have a look. So I've written on here, B, you need fuse nine, A, you need fuse eight. Now be careful, in America, we'll put the picture up now, on the screen you'll see that the fuse box has swapped over so just which one is a and b make sure you get that right but it should be a8 right so and i've put black so this is terrible writing that is on a you need fuse eight with the black wire on b you need fuse nine which is the red wire so let's do that fuse nine is somewhere there we go there so i'll give i'll give myself a i don't want to give myself a whole host of extra wire do I? So let's just snip that off you should use proper cable strippers. strippers but there we go twist that right so i've got to join that to my now which one is this one tyler the red one oh, where's my other where's my other cable where's my other fuse connector right we found it right so i'm going to put that inside there we all good i'm going to go he's a blue crimp so he's the second one in Now, I'm not a, the biggest fan of crimps, but if you think about it, it's all inside a weatherproof container in there, so we're not too bad. Right, so I'll get, so I'll get the same done on this black one. I'll get this black one crimped on. Uh, again, we've got to go to fuse eight, so I'll cut him short a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll show you us inserting them. Right, so we've, we've put the black one in there. We've done a neat job. It actually looks super fresh. I'm happy with that. Right, so let's pull this one out. So pin nine. Get the pliers, put that one out, and then we're going to insert that one in the in the one nearest, so that keeps its original fuse. And these take a bit of pushing in; they're tight. Right, right, and that's that. And there's that new. That's the second five out fuse going in. That one went in sweet. Right, and then we need it. So I'm just going to tuck all that down in that middle cavity. I'm going to try and come up in that little. Can I get between those little? We're going to have to go over the top. Is there room to come underneath there? I think I'm, I'm over engineering this, I think. So. Just A to B. Uh, it is. Right. 
There we go. Take that crimp out of sight. Right. Look at that. Right. So we can put all that back together. Now, I think that is all the wiring done. Just right. Let's just have a recap of the instructions and then I'll come back. Right. So we, we appear to have gone through all the instructions and everything. We do have one cable left, which, which is always a worry. Cable S. We haven't found out what S does yet, have we? Sly. Cable. Yeah, they can't eat tight now, you see. <laughs> right then. So this is the, um, yes, yeah, so we're not sure what that one is. Mystery. Hmm. Anyway, right. Let's see if, right. So the first thing you've got to do, we, we've got power. We've got it connected. We've reconnected the battery. So we are going to see if we can pair it. Now, I know my little dangly bit, it's probably got a posh name in the world of winches, um, is in there. But I'm going to try and just unwind it a bit and then go in. I'm going to put my fingers nowhere near a winch that could be active that is going to be disaster right okay so let me just get, navigate to home because i've been playing with this so when you power this up you will get a menu like this this one literally turns it on and off it's not touch screen i'm so used to touch screen you have to toggle with these and it just goes on a little merry dance around there and then you select with this top one and that turns it off wake it up press any button warn go prepared right and then I see in the settings menu it appears is the first, I just practiced it quickly, but here we go. Settings in. And we are looking for these two little sort of radio things. And this is our pairing. So we can rattle through here, press OK to select. And it says, oh gosh, what have I got? I've got to press the middle button and that button for three seconds to go to pairing. Right? You got that? That yeah. makes sense. Can you see that on the screen? Right, yeah. right here you go. One two three right all right which one's tick which one's okay this one i'm guessing okay yes okay right there we go okay right now i've got 29 seconds you hold that tile i'll go and switch i've got to switch the ignition on here we go Ooh. Mm -hmm. now is it stopped? Did I run out of time? No, it's like 18 seconds. Oh, and what has it done? Oh, oh, it looks like it's done it okay, doesn't it? You I think it must have found it. Top left you didn't have before. Wee. Now, one point to note, make sure your switch on the top here is rocked that way. Can you see that? Well done, yeah. Tyler. So it's rocked doop, that way. Okay. He's flashing green as well. He's flashing green, is he? Right then. So in... Now we've got ignition on, we've got, we haven't got the starter motor going. So I'm, I'm just going to click OK here. Right. And then what, should we go to, should we go to home? Let's go home. Go home. Right. Should we see if it works? So I guess this is wind wire onto the drum. Can you see the graphics here, Tyler? It's quite hard to see. And yeah. this one's wind wire. Oh, but this one's good. It's, it's recessed in when you're bringing it in. It's raised up like the, the graphics coming out from the button to go out. See that? Uh -huh. Right, let's have a look. You ready? Oh, I don't know if I can do <laughs> this. You've got to click the middle button. Oh, you've got to click the middle button to get onto actual winching. Uh, right, then here we go. Right, so it's saying, oh, have you got to press the two? That looks like you've got to press the two at the same time. Yeah. I reckon to, to, to stop the kids playing with it. Whoa. Right, we've got a green temperature. Oh. We're cool. And we've got cogs. Do you reckon they spin as we go? And we've got one and two and home. Right, are you ready? I'm ready. Out. Oh, oh it's moving, Tyler. Don't look at me. <laughs> right, now, hold on a minute. I ought to be super, super careful. I'm going to turn the ignition <laughs> off. I'm not putting my fingers in there, not as a novice. I'm going to just turn the ignition off and we'll see. I'm going to hoop that out and then we'll see what happens. Right, I've turned the ignition off, but we haven't actually locked it and the lights haven't gone out. So I think we do have to be a bit careful because I think when we were looking at that fuse, that fuse stayed live for a few seconds. Do you remember, Tyler? Yeah. So before you go put in, I would always, because I think now the lights have gone out now. Oh, the light, because we've only got one in. Right, and, um, so let's just check. It doesn't, oh, it's still, it's still working with my ignition off, which is slightly worrying. Um, how do I do that? Right, I'll go and disconnect the battery quickly till I've mastered this. Right, so um, I just disconnected the battery to reveal said hookage. Right then, it's not really a hook, is it? It's a 
hoopage. I think it's a receptor for the other hook. I think you're right. It's a shackle hoop thing. Shackle. Yes. Yes, is your naval experience doing us any good here, no. Tyler? No. <laughs> All good. I know is not to put my fingers near ropes. <laughs> yes. um, right, so you'll notice that when it's gone dead, um, you've got... And you've got no bars of signal, you've got an X, the temperature's gone funny, and it doesn't do anything now. Um, so if we now go and turn the ignition back on, and we'll have a little look at our winch, and then we'll have to do another whole video on using the winch. So actually, let's leave it there. We have a winch. We have a remote control winch. Firstly, firstly, Thank you, Land Rover. Thank you, Mr. Skywalker, for sorting us out with a winch. We do really appreciate it. Even though you've given it to us for free, we have tried to give an unbiased and critical, at times, review of the winch to fit him. Right, so let's have a look. The cradle, engineered superbly. I mean, and the way they've designed it so when you have an impact, it will crash. Because let's face it, none of us want to hurt people or ourselves in road accidents so i think they've done a good job managing to design a really good winch that will will take tons but when you push it will retract in and absorb some energy and work with the crumple cans and stuff that's really good right there's a few little bits about the kit the cutting off the connectors and obviously the whole loom story thing of how did they damage a loom? I think that bit in the fuse box where they're telling you to start cutting wires is a no-no, don't cut. I think um, the piggyback fuse connectors are a better idea. Where they're telling you to cut off your connectors for the flaps, that's also a bad idea. Um, I think they should give you a, a plug to go on there. Right, um, let's have a think. We've obviously got to reassemble, but I think we're gonna leave that for next week. Um, any other comments we got, Tyler? There's a few little niggle things with the flaps and the and the getting blocks and. I think it's, it's obvious. I'm not that they hear me, but it's obvious. Have my mic. Yeah, I mean, clip it on you. There you go, Tyler. You have your say. Excellent. I think it's obvious what part of what is made by Warren and what's made by Land Rover, and I think where the two have had to sort of meet and cross paths has made a bit of ambiguity in the instructions and how it fits yeah and things like the missing conduit so i mean if you're going to fit these ones you're going to have to get some extra conduit because they don't supply you enough yeah i'll have the mic back <laughs> um what else do they um it's but it's a few niggly bits isn't it but i think and the instructions where all the wires were yellow i mean it just it's just not helpful um it's almost like yeah i mean and a lot of people are saying brilliant video thanks for showing I'm just going to pay Lander. I'm just going to I'm just going to tick the box on the order form that says which we still need to get the pricing and I will try and get that and put it in the I'm waiting for our local main dealer to give me the pricing the retail pricing so that we can put that there um, we talked about having to upgrade your springs the way it does add weight to your vehicle if you've got coil sprung you will need to add those extra springs um, they've obviously engineered this extra safety box to look at the current coming down the, the wire. Hopefully our instructions have helped you. Um, don't sue my backside if it doesn't work there for guidance only. Um, but it seems to work so far for us. So there we go. And I'm sure if Land Rover have got any concerns, they will let me know duly and I will provide updates and corrections as required. There will be one last part of this where we re-put it all back together clean the car up and show you. I don't know if I'll get that done this weekend. I might better pay George to help me. Um, have good fun with that. I hope you have a good weekend. Those of you in America, have a good Thanksgiving weekend and we will catch you next week.